Hey guys, aka Ed on Cars. Okay, so today we're taking the VXC Trienti drag racing. The first part of this video, we're going to get straight into the action. You're going to see us pull a number of quarter mile pulls, launching at different RPMs with multiple cameras set up. The second part of this video, I'm calling after hours, which is where we're going to analyze the day's data. I'm also going to be comparing Santapod's professional grade drag racing systems to the mobile race box version to see how much difference there is. And for those of you that will hang around right to the end, I'll stick a blue cross rail before I sign off. This should be good. Let's get into it. Guys, welcome to After Hours. So we've got back safely, the car's parked up, we've unpacked, and now we're ready to look at the data. Now, one of the things you guys may have noticed is sitting on my dashboard was this little puppy. So this is a race box. I bought this about a month ago from Amazon. I think it cost me around 200 to 250 pounds. And one of the things I was really keen to do about with this is, other than um, being able to record data for tracks, and you can sort of download the tracks from your phone onto the unit, um, it also has a function that deals with drag racing. So I was really keen to see how accurate this little thing could get 
to the actual professional grade software and systems of Santapod. So let's check out some of the data now. Okay, so here's the data that I got from Santapod. And this was a literal pull from this little sheet down here uh, onto the Excel. Now, despite you only seeing me doing about five runs in the video, I actually did 12 in total. If you wanna know why I didn't put more than that, scroll ahead to the bloopers section of the video and check that out. So I did 12 runs in the end. And I can see, you can see that I've color coded this here for, to help us along a little bit. So unsurprisingly, green is the best uh, and red is the worst. And I've done that for each category. So we can see that the best run of the day was actually the last run of the day, um, whereby it did a quarter mile in 12.51 seconds. Now this was actually the last clip of the video that you just saw as well. So that was the hard launch at about 4,000 RPM where the tires were pretty hot as they were being run pretty consistently through the day. And that was the last one. So you can see that we got our best 60 foot, our best 300 foot and our best eighth of a mile ET. Um, and one of the interesting things here is how, you know, in your mind you would think, well, if I'm going faster across the line, that must mean the time is faster. Which is interesting because this time here is one of our fastest, actually technically the second fastest of the day. And actually it's got the second from last slowest mile per hour speed. I find that fascinating. Now our actual fastest run of the day was almost a 12.5 second flat. And you might be thinking, where isn't that video? Well, apparently other than needing help with driving, I also need help when it comes to setting up videos and getting them to record properly. So it was at this time when I was racing, uh, there was a Subaru, a blue Subaru, and you actually can see a clip of it in the very first clip of this video here. And this was a drag car, and it was phenomenal to be on circuit with that. So despite me cutting the clip, whereby I got a little bit of a head start there, or the line a little bit better, there was a lot of drag cars here just purely for testing. And by second gear, he'd already sped past me. And even though it was a testing lap, I still think he ran a sort of a nine and a half second quarter mile. It was phenomenal for me to be on the track at the same time as something of that caliber. So actually in the in-car video, I'm sort of wailing with laughter and excitement as this car sort of levels past me at probably about 60 to 70 miles an hour, just as I was getting into third. Um, but yeah, in that one, um, the force of the launch caused the camera that was mounted in the cockpit to just basically move backwards and record the ceiling instead. So there we go. Most of my best times I think were also had on the left circuit as well. I'm not a superstitious person, but I definitely found like the left track was probably the one that was going for the most. I think the thing, if we discount the first run, which I actually had my girlfriend in the car for as well, I think the really impressive thing here is all of these times are within you know a quarter slash half a second of each other and that's whether the tires were cold warm hot whether i was under revving it getting it just right or over revving it the car just performed so consistently throughout the time and that was one of the great joys about this car in the video above you know which was the last time i went to santaport where i was in my 400 brake horsepower honda civic that was such a more difficult car to launch, you know, and actually for that the whole day I think I only got six runs then but for the whole day I probably only had one or two sort of runs that I, I was kind of happy to stand behind. On the day I saw a couple of other fast front wheel drive cars there, there was specifically this white Leon uh, Cupra. I didn't get a chance to chat to the guy but I suspect it was running the same sort of power and he was trying again and again he got some really great times there but it was just it was so much more precise that you needed to be so the, the VX allows you to be a worse driver which is good in my case because I definitely need all the help that I could get but even then you know similarly he was running around 13 like mid 13s high 13s which is what the Civic ran which doesn't really stack up when you tell people the car's got more than 400 brake horsepower but there you go um, weight, balance, and the right wheel drive, uh, dare I say, might be everything. But now let's check and see how this data did in comparison to this little box here. Guys, just to say, if you've made it this far into the video and you're not subscribed already, if you'd consider subscribe, subscribing, I'd really appreciate that. I'm hoping you're liking the content. A lot of my content will be like this, but a real variety. So please do subscribe. So the data is stored just left off screen, but what I've done is in blue, I've put the comparison here. 
And the first thing I'd say here is, look at that margin of error, less than a percent. Actually, it's closer to a quarter of a percent than it is even to half a percent, which is really, really impressive as well. Now, in most of the runs here, there's a few that was the exception to those two here. I found that the race box tended to record a little bit quick, so it sort of said that I was going faster than I was. And I think looking at the mobile phone data, which I got off the device, I think one of the reasons for that was one of the things the device is trying to do is calculate elevation and whether the track or, you know, you're on a complete flat surface or going up a hill or down a hill. And I could see it making some adjustments because it thought that it was on a slope. Now, I, I'm not sure if there is a slope uh, on the Santa Fe Raceway. I suspect that it's almost completely level flat. Um, but a, an interesting comparison still. And, you know, we're only talking tenths, if not hundreds of a second. Do you know what I mean? And it's just impressive that you could start up this little unit and take it anywhere and get data that was as well qualified as this. And as you can see, it's pretty consistent as well. There's only a few bearers whereby, like, for example, here and there, the two obvious ones, where, you know, it, the, the margin of error was anything greater than that. So a, a really, really great piece of kit, all for 200 to 250 quid. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a look at the race box data in itself because there were some more data points in here that I didn't have access to um, from Santapod. Now, the probably two most interesting ones are the 0 to 60 and the Max G. Now, the, the first one we'll talk about is 0 to 60. So, the best 0 to 60 we did of the day was almost a four second dead, um, and that again was on that last run of ours. Now, you may have seen a video on my channel where I've got a picture of the car and it says 0 to 60 in 3.95 seconds and not to say that that was clickbait but that was recorded on a mobile phone app. Now those are obviously going to never be quite as accurate as well but I think I have another reason for seeing a sort of the fairly consistent spread here. So looking at the data from the race box what's clear is my second gear pretty much tops out I you know dead on 60 miles an hour. So whilst on the dial it's indicating more, the GPS data puts us directly at 60. So, uh, you know, how the car's set up at the moment, so it's got a Borg Werner hybrid turbo on it. It's very much of a mid-range turbo, um, and we've got some mapping on it at the moment as well. So it's making, as I said, about 330 at the, at the, at the crank. It's making um, 300 almost dead at the hubs. We've had to set the mapping up in a way that protects the rods until we do a full engine rebuild. Um, that is coming, and um, probably a different style of turbo is also coming with it as well. But right now the car's still enjoyable, but it, it definitely makes peak power at around five and a half thousand RPM. And it's not like it sort of plateaus out and actually starts going back the other way from the last dyno run that we did. But that's not to say that it couldn't do a sub three second 0 to 60 in its current setup. I think the way that you would generate that is that basically you would take second gear and hit the rev limiter. And I think when then you would find that there was a 0 to 60, even on GPS, uh, starting with a three. The other really interesting thing is the G's that get pulled here, especially on the very last run. So, you know, we pulled 1.14 G and uh, looking at the data, I think that's when I went into second gear the most. I mean, that was a pretty hard send it launch at sort of 4,000 RPM. It might have even been a, a little bit more than that. Um, and uh, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty shaky place to be. If you replay the video, you know, whether it's inside or outside, you can see the car sort of juttering for traction um, there as well but it produced one of the best times of the day. Um, so some really interesting data here, really interesting. Well guys, it's been fun hanging out with you guys after hours. I've made it most of the way through this beer whilst recording this and doing a little bit of editing besides. Stay put and we've got the blooper rail coming right now, which is a bit of fun. It's only a couple of short clips, but it's definitely worth checking out. If you've liked the content, please do consider subscribing and if not liking, any questions, any thoughts, good, positive, you know, negative, please do leave me a comment. I do try to respond to all the comments. And it's one of the things that keeps me engaged in uploading to YouTube, despite being a, a micro channel by sorts. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for your time. Take care of yourself and catch you in the next one. Cheers.
Well, I would love to comment on that run, but my dragon is off. Next to 20, we're running about 300. Uh, oh, probably a good idea to shut the boot, wouldn't it?